Okay, now why have I raised all of that? Well, we're trying to build up the addiction. What, what is the group addiction? Okay, now, now, ladies, that's your chance. Now I want the men, only the men now. What do you guys feel about women in relation to yourself? Kent? The women are superior to us? You feel the woman's superior? I agree. You feel the woman is superior? Whoops, I don't know if that colour's real good. I agree. What else do you feel, guys? So if we come across to our, our and we go, uh, oh, let's try one this side. So Daniel and then so. Uh, Ellen, unsupported. Unsupported. What do you feel the women feel about you? The opposite. Yeah. So they feel that. What What do you mean by the opposite? Like, I I tend to do everything I can to support. You do everything you can to support them. Yep. 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 And what do you feel in return? Unsupported. So nothing gets done to support you. Is that how you feel? Or uh, very that, little? That's how I feel. Yeah. Okay. If we, we were over at Daniel Webb. I've lost it. Lost it. Sorry, Daniel. If we go up the back to Gary, across to Dennis, down to Andrew. Oh, I'm afraid of them. You're afraid? Yeah, I'd agree with that, my friend. So I placate them. Yeah, you're petrified of them, actually. Yeah, but uh, Dennis? Manipulated. Manipulated. Controlled. By them and controlled, yes. Put an R in there. So just put manipulated. Who was I over here? That's right, Andrew. Andrew, um, I feel used. Uh, used. You feel abused. Used. Used, sorry, used. How about, shall I go used and abused? <laughs> yeah. How do you feel, Justin? I feel a bit confused because my pattern has been to manipulate the woman and control the woman. Correct. You are one, the one man in this audience who doesn't fit this mould. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have been doing the, a bit of the abusing yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Brendan? Uh, Brendan and I just I feel as though I need to make them feel good about themselves. Right, so you've got to, what would you call that? Making someone feel good about themselves. Build up their worth. Build up yep. their worth. Nick? Nick? I've got to spell, learn to spell right. U I L D Upworth. Yeah. Uh, Nikki, uh, feel judged. You feel judged, yes. So, so what do you got to give them in return? Um, comfort, for so, example. So they don't judge you. Or. Um, so let's say you feel judged. Let's just do that. Judged. Yep. Okay, maybe agree with what they're saying. Okay, so you feel like you have to agree. Yeah. What happens when you don't agree, Nikki? Can you? Uh, get ang anger projected at me. Yeah, that's pretty uncomfortable, right? Yeah. 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 So if we go across to Peter. Uh, kind of like how they feel entitled to feel like a princess. I feel like I should have to make them feel like a princess. Right. Like so, so basically, if we're honest with ourselves, guys, most of you, look at that list and you go, yeah, that's yeah. what makes me a good man. I make them feel all of those things, right? Yeah. Yeah? So here's the codependency. See, what happens is that there's something going on inside of us, though, that causes us to feel like we have to do all of these things for the women. So what causes us to feel like we have to? What emotions within you about yourself, guys, feel like you have to do these things? So Jada. Uh, Jada, um, 
I think like I feel ashamed inside and it's like... Ashamed of what though? Can you see that for a lot of men they actually feel in relation to a woman, they just feel ashamed that they're a man? Yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah, I feel like even sharing myself with a woman is terrifying to me, Yeah, I think, my real self. Yeah, so yeah. personal feeling ashamed of being a man. Now, isn't it interesting? The women feel you should feel that way. Yeah. And in most cases, our mothers have taught us that, particularly Western mothers in particular, have taught us that we should feel that way about ourselves because we're a man. It's such a terrible thing that you're a man. Right? Men are bastards, is one I heard all the through time. my childhood. Yeah, all yeah. through your childhood. So, just, so then you start feeling like you're a bastard, right? Yeah. Yeah, start feeling there's something really wrong with you, right? Yeah. So you go to Anto, and then back up to Grant. Anto, I feel like I'm like Justin in, in terms of that I expect a lot of things from women yeah. and to, to help me build my worth and how I feel about a man, but I don't feel very... You do. Yep. So I can see combinations. But, um, yep. Remember I said it wasn't everybody in the <laughs> group. This is the group dynamic, though, for this group. Now, it's interesting, you guys, though, if you think about it, what the women are doing to most of the guys in the audience is what you do to women. Now, can you see that there must be a lot of really nasty goings-on around us in the spirit world at the moment? Because you've got some men who are like that with women, and then you've got lots of women who are like that with men, and everyone's having a big barney. This is why a lot of you feel pretty bad, is because there's in, the, around the, in the spirit world around us at the moment... There's just lots of people having huge fights, right? <laughs> trying to get the, trying to get superiority, trying to get control of the situation. Mary, I just wondered, Anto, for yourself, there is a big feeling in you though that you have to provide the security and a yep. feeling of safety, isn't there? Yeah, I, I do feel that more so in the last twelve months that I've, um, that there's like a victimhood feeling, and then. Um, if I don't do, if I don't provide, I won't get anything for myself. So it's still more of a selfish feeling, though, for myself. Yeah. So it's for selfish reasons. Yeah. So doing. my victim. It's not for them. You're doing it for you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'd agree with that. Yeah. So we're going back to Grant up this side, and on this side we go to Brendan. Um, <coughs> Grant, uh, powerlessness, unloved. Yep. Anger and um, I just sort of blank out after that. Yep, no worries. Good. Cross to Gary and on this side was Brendan, so if we go to Brendan. Just, I might be um, duplicating, but just a total unworthiness. Um, yeah, so you just feel unworthy around women just generally, yeah? yeah. Yep. Okay. Right. Uh, I, I feel like it's my fault that they're like that, and like I have to fix it. Yes. So there's a definite feeling, isn't there, of 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 uh, should we say blame, blame. personal yeah. blame? Like there is a feeling that you're going to blame yourself. Now, of course, many of you men have grown up with women who have been like that, right? And so when you grow up with women who have been like that, you actually end up feeling what they wanted you to feel. And now, for the majority of you, though, you're not feeling those feelings. The reason why I asked you about those feelings is you're not feeling them. You are spending all of your time in avoidance of feeling them. So, for example, if I can go back to yourself, Gary, if we can put the mic back to you. Last night, you were surrounded by eight women in dinner. Yep. Yep. And you had no desire whatsoever to feel any of those feelings in that situation. Yep. Yep. In fact, you enjoyed being around eight women. Yeah, so I got, I got to placate them. Yeah, and what Please. did you get in return? Anger. No, no, mm. that's not what you got in return. I got to feel good. Yeah, mm. they projected at you that you were a nice fella. Yep, yep. You know, you, you, you've broken the mould. Yep. Right? So you're unique, you know. None of, all the other guys are bad, but you're really nice. Yep. Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. Mm. And then there was a table last night at dinner where the entire table was women. Just, there was not a single man on the entire table. What do you think that table felt? 
Well, you pro can you see you probably felt all those things? And then if you notice at dinner, there's these little clutches of men where there's four or five men all staying together, right? Having a chat with each other, staying together. Why do you think they're doing that? Right, Marco? Uh, afraid? Yeah, they're terrified. Like, I'm very terrified. <laughs> yeah. And, and wouldn't you be, yeah. given all of those feelings that are actually going on? How do you feel, John? If we come across to John, over around the side. I think the better word is repulsed. You feel repulsed? Yeah. Yeah, just pushed away by them like you're never going to get anything right anyway. So. Well, I, I think when, you know, when the week started, I was going to sort of you know, say hi to everybody and try to get to know everybody and sort of like, ooh. Yeah. I don't even want to know them. No, no, you don't even want to know them. Many of the guys feel that way, right? You don't even want to engage any of these women. All you get when they, when they look at you is daggers. So how are they going to feel when you're actually engaging with them? We come down to Nick. There seems to be this emotion that we are responsible for their emotions, and that they are, and that so it, and it goes both ways. So it's like of course every addiction is about this, right? The guys feel that the women are responsible for their emotions, and the girls feel that the men are responsible for their emotions, and both are not owning their emotions, not actually choosing to feel their own emotions. Yeah, Max. Yeah, I often, I often feel that I have to make them um, recognise that I'm not like the other guys, that I'm so, you know, they can be safe with me. Yeah. I'm not a threat, and that yeah. way they're not going to get angry at me. Yeah, yeah. This is very common for most of the guys in the audience. Michael. Michael, I feel like nurturing. You feel like sort of nursing them, taking care of them, nurturing no, them. No, I feel they are nurturing. Oh, they are, like yeah. they're nurturing you. Yeah, that's a very common thing. I think, Gary, you'd have to agree with that feeling, wouldn't you? That when you're around a whole group of women, ah, oh, I feel like I'm being nurtured now. It feels like I, I, I've yet to release from the breast. <laughs> yes. That was a polite way of saying it. Um, Marco. Like I'm obviously one of the guys in a, in a small group and I find that when women do come and talk, it's like more of an attack, not, not based on, like I'm, fe I'm fearing it now. Yeah. Um, and I'm in powerless to speak the truth because I'm scared. Scared, yeah. 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 Can, can I be honest with you guys? You are not standing up for God's truth. You are not. To, to, if I wanted to put it more bluntly, you need to grow a pair and stand up for God's truth. Does that make sense? No matter what's coming at you. That's what a man does. In fact, that's what a woman does, actually, as well. Not that she needs to grow a pair. Right? So, so all of us should be standing up for God's truth, but we're not. We're just feeding this codependent addiction that's going on as a group. The majority of the time, that's what's going on here. Just feeding, feeding, feed. It's a feeding frenzy. Yeah. Dennis? Yeah. I, for me, I, I can feel a, I can feel what I should be saying, but I just don't want to come out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, at some point, you're going to have to exercise the will for it to come well, out. Well, I'm doing the soft ones. <laughs> well, yeah, this is what you guys always do. You, you're, you're always bending the truth because you know you can't say it as you really feel it. So you bend it. You just uh, just do a bit of quiet here, just change it there. You try to get a little bit in. Honestly, it's way, way out of harmony with what God does. Mary? Uh, Dallin, you just said you know you can't say it the way you want to say it. I, I live with a man who can say it the way he wants to say it. Correct. Regardless of what comes back at him. And don't you so. think sometimes I'm scared? Like, you try being in front of a thousand people or in front, in front of two million people on the, on, in the media or something and, and then having all of those two million people project at you, right, that you're an idiot while you're trying to talk. Right? Yeah, at some point, we've got to stand up and actually connect to our real feelings and say them no matter what's happening around us. 
Can you see that? We can use as an excuse the fear if we want, which is what we're doing. See, this is what's happening here. You know who has dominion over you at the moment and has had for the last five days? Women, spirits in the hells have had total control over this entire group for five days. And, and none of you have wanted to even address it. Because last night, after a talk about addictions, a talk about hurt, self, facade, talk about your will, like we talked about all those things already, and yet last night, pretty much most of you were completely in the exact thing, the exact addiction of avoidance of the issue. Mary, you wanted to say? I uh, just wanted to mention on the first day that um, when we talked about engaging the will to love and the fact that we had to put ourselves in situations that were overwhelming. Now, for someone like you, Gary, I reckon it would be a really overwhelming way to challenge your addictions to say, I'm not talking to any women today. I'm going to seek out my brothers and talk to them because you know you have equally issues with the guys as well. So this is the kind of thing, if you're going to overwhelm yourself in terms of opportunities to love, yeah. you've got to do these kind of things. Yeah. And let's be honest about a lot of your questions that you've asked me on the personal truth session questions. Most of them are not the question you need to be asking. The reason why is because you're trying to ignore the question you need to be asking. In, for this group, the biggest single problem between you and God is your belief about women. The men and the women both have the same belief about women. Right? The women believe they are superior, the men believe the women are superior. The w women believe they should be looked after, the men believe they should look after the women. The women believe they should be safe and secure, be made to feel safe and secure. The men believe that's what a good man does, makes a woman feel safe and secure. The women believe they feel unwanted, so the men want them, but yeah, that's not good enough because he only wants me sexually, right? That's what most of you girls feel, isn't it? He only, he's only in it for the sex. There's no real desire for me in the, in the process, right? And most of the ladies, you're demanding, pushy, blaming. Last, last week it was really sad, you know. There was one interaction last week where we'd been talking about this, what we would classify as intergender dynamics, right? And one guy came up to us and said, you know, after, after we had spent the whole day talking about addictions and intergender dynamics, he had three women come up to him and laugh about his fear right to his face. They laughed at him. Just laughed at him. So did they hear anything in the day? Obviously not. Did they have a will to love? Obviously not. They made jokes about him. They actually made jokes about his feelings. And yet, you know, if three men went up to one woman and made a whole heap of jokes about her feelings, hmm, what would most of you do then? You'd be in uproar. Right? So there's, there's, got to be, there's got to be issues here, isn't there? This issue is the codependence that is going on between the two groups, men and women, between the two genders, here is women, you believe yourself to be better than men. You believe yourselves to be superior. You believe that they should do a whole heap of things for you. And the problem in this group is that all of you men agree. <laughs> 